えー、続きましての公演です、えー、続きましてはチョン・クアン・チェンさんインディ・リーさんシャンデー・ジャンさんからオペレーション・キメラ半導体ベンダーをターゲットにした APT 攻撃についてお話をいただきます、えー、サイクラフトエンジニアルエンジニアによる半導体業界で約2年間発生した持続的標的型攻撃 APT の分析です、えー、今回のテーマにつきましては動画をいただいております Uh, our next session is Operation Chimera, IPT Operation Targets,、uh, Semiconductor Vendors. Please welcome our speakers, Chang Kuan Chen, Indi Ling, Shan De Jen. Please start. Hello, everyone. I'm CK. Very happy to come to COPU and sharing our research. Today, our topic is Operation Chimera, APT Operation Targets Semiconductor Industry. So, first,、uh, let's introduce ourselves. I'm CK Chen. You can just call me CK. I'm a senior researcher at SciCraft. I'm、uh, responsible for our research team. In the past, I'm a CTF player and found the Bamboo Fox CTF team and joined the DEF CON final for twice. I'm very active in the community. So, currently, I'm a HICOM and HITB review board and been a member of one of a, a top private head group. In Taiwan, like called CH Root. My partner, Shang De Zhang,、uh, is a security researcher, and he also found a Taiwan local hacker group called UCCU. And Indy Lin,、uh, who is a security researcher and focuses on reverse engineering and more analysis. And he has、uh, published several research in Hikam and Rukam.、Uh, and our company is Stycraft. Uh, and as a startup company that moved to the third year. And we're trying to use the AI and machine learning to solve a lot of security problems,、uh, such as、uh, APT investigation, threat hunting, and threat intelligence. And here is three of our、uh, systems. The sensor is our threat hunting system that collects information in the endpoint. The CyberTotal is a platform for the threat intelligence. And this information Will be feedback to the s a c a r i a which is a core of our APT investigation. So, these three systems help us a lot to track in the APT campaign, just like we will mention today. And we also joined the MITRE ATT and CK evaluation in the last year and get a very nice result. If you are interested in ball luck, you can follow our white paper in our blog. So, compared to our Uh, today's topic,、uh, this is today's outline. Since Taiwan has a very special political situation, so we face a lot of cyber attack every year. In 2018,、uh, we have a TSNC ransomware. TSNC is the largest、uh, semiconductor vendor s in Taiwan. In this attack, their production line、uh, is held down for two days and cost about $170 million. So, this attack shows that even so, the isolated environment is possibly to be compromised. In the 2019, uh, the ASUS supply chain attack happened. Uh, and we called it Shadow Hammer and first discovered by Kaspersky. And this attack put the millions of users in the risk. In this year, the most critical、uh, incident to Taiwan is a cold lock attack to the CPC. And CPC is our、uh, main company of the energy sector and has a lot of gas station. So during the attack, this gas station cannot provide their payment service. So this attack, attack not only brings the inconvenience to the users, but also shows the、uh, attacker's capability to、uh, shut down、uh, this kind of critical infrastructure. And compared to semiconductor landscape, with the decades of development, Taiwan has become a leadership in this field. In 2019,、uh, our IC market share is in the fourth place, and the water capacity is taking the first place in the world. So, and according to the Taiwan News report, we are the largest and fast growing semiconductor equipment maker and take about 12 million revenue. 
So this shows that Taiwan plays a very important role in the global semiconductor landscape. So we monitor this attack between 2018 and 2019. We discovered that several uh, semiconductor vendors is being compromised. And most of the vendor is located at uh, Xinzhu Science Park. And Xinzhu Science Park um, is an area that a lot of Taiwan's high-tech vendors locate in. So we can say it's a century of Taiwan high-tech vendors, and especially for the semiconductor vendors. And we will say this attack is an intensive attack. Uh, after we published our white paper in uh, April this year, we received a lot of feedback. And we know that there are more than seven vendors is being targeted. And we also published our research in the Blackhead this year. And after we publish a report, uh, just in the two months, we identify the other victim. So now we know there are more, more than eight uh, semiconductor vendors is being attacked. And some vendors is not only attack Taiwan, and some vendor in Europe is also being attacked. In the last part, that uh, we want to say is that uh, this attack uh, not only attack the important vendors in Taiwan, and also attack their uh, subsidiaries, competitors, and the supply chain. So we will say that the tech uh, moving from attacking the single point, single uh, enterprise, to attack the supply chain. And now they are trying to attack the entire industry surface. So we call this group the Kimela. as because their activity, their technique, and mower were very similar. So we believe that this attack will work of the same reactor. And their main target is the semiconductor vendors. And they widely to use a mower that merge from the open source and open tool, like a dumper, Mimikas, and commercial tool, uh, Cobotrike. And their C2 is hosted in the public cloud to avoid attribution. And their goal is trying to steal the document source code SDK uh, about some project related to a chip. So today we will tell you the more detail about the attack. So we first will go through several case study. So we will share the three case study. Yeah. Um, not only because these three vendors are the leading global position in uh, their own market segment. But also because now we involve the investigation in a different time point. So the analytical perspective uh, of the attack campaign was also different. Uh, for the A company is our long-term partner, so we can track in the more detail about the attacker's activities. And this information enables us to track it back to the root cause. In the B company is a one-time IR service. So when we start the investigation, the attack is finished uh, and has happened for a long time. So we cannot recover everything back. But however, we can highlight the long-term activities and identify what kind of data was leaked. And for the C company, it's also our long-term partner. Uh, and however, they have a very high skill security team. So they can help us to, to uh, dig more, so uh, give a lot of feedback and help us to illustrate and profile the director. So uh, next, uh, we will turn to John's part. Uh, John will help us to introduce the case study. Thanks, CK. So I am next presenter, so I will introduce uh, two case study. And the first technology is our long-term partner. So the three actors only enter the environment in one day, and the 50 endpoints and 6 user account were compromised. And the four malware and the HC2 server we found. And the, the right-hand side is the, the our AI generator, the graph, the flow, and the tail, the tail, the investigator, what happened in the environment and how the threat actor later moved on to other endpoint. 
And the first mod we found is the Cobalt Strike B game. And then the Cobalt Strike B game pertains as the Google update. And then we did a, we searched on the files total and then we found nothing on the files total. And the Cobalt Strike B game will inject the payload into other process. And we found that there's two endpoints, server so loader and PC China has the Cobalt Strike B game. And uh, just like previous slides say, we, we found the uh, pretend as a Google update. So they, the threader used the hosting server for their C2 and they use a cloud, Google Cloud Platform. And uh, there's an interesting point is the uh, first day the Cobalt Strike Beacon was were connected to the Google update, but uh, the second day they, after they let move on to uh, another endpoint, they the Cobalt Strike Beacon has changed the Google, changed the uh, hosting server to other cloud 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 platform. So why the Strider has switched the uh, cloud hosting service? So in our investigation opinion, we think because the Strider has a multiple operator, and the second day the different operator has preferred their different hosting server. So that's why they change the, the hosting service. And then we found, based on the, the, our timeline a analyze, we found the, the back door in a piece of China was implemented from the server loader. So we traced back to the server loader and then we found some uh, remote execution tools. One is a schedule tester and the, another one is WMIC. So they use a schedule task to deploy the Cobalt Strike Beacon and uh, they use a WMIC to check can they not let them move on to another endpoint and check uh, the endpoint has an internet, internet connection. So based on the remote execution tool, execution history, so we draw, quick draw the uh, server loader data move on to the, another three endpoints. But why the server loader has this behavior? So we check, and uh, we also not notice the uh, server loader has a remote collect the uh, registry and the NTDS data in the domain AD domain controller. So why the thread has collected these two files? Because the NTDS data is a uh, Windows AD database, so it store the password, email account, and the name and the ID. But the, all the information are encrypted, so they need the uh, key to decrypt. So the key is stored in the registry, so that's why the thread editor has need to collect these two files. So, based on our correlation analysis, so we found that the uh, uh, MBClayer has a schedule task execute to the server loader. So MBClayer must be the source. So we check, to, check into the MBClayer. So we notice uh, before the, the, the sweater, before the uh, later movement to a uh, server loader, server that has a six mi minutes before the schedule task execution. That's a IP one has used RDP and the user DO one to make a successful login to the a big career. So it's a very highly possibility to the root cause of this attack. So we notice uh, the threat actor has uh, once they into the environment, they use a net user to do the Windows AD discovery. And this is a very, very strange because, uh, because once they RDP success login, they, they do this very quickly. So I think, so in our investigation opinion, so we think that is a, that's a best practice was, uh, once they get an environment, what's the, what's the recognition they need to do? So, the sweater also use a one byte modified IR to collect the the the, the, uh, the intelligence property. 
and we found a lot of the in, same fire in the in the same fire in the environment, and the, it's a hydrogen has been used in the past attack. So based on the previous finding, we named this uh, as a operation chimera. So look, look we track back to to Amicara what's the IP one, but uh, in our Based on our finding, the IP one is probably is a shared host or a VPN, VPN host IP. So, so we can now check bit into the uh, IP one. So the second coming is a uh, IR case. So the big coming has been compromised, and the big coming and the C coming has a business collaboration. So BC com. B C coming has a uh, do the some network internet internet connection and the C company asking us to investigate the B company. So the Sway editor has total you as a a, a a one year was compromised at least one year in the B company. So we found a, a power shield and the in the oh, the Sway editor also used the a uh, couple strikes beacon, but this time they use a power shield to to inject the couple strikes beacon, and the couple strikes beacon will inject the malware to the insistence, and then they also use they also use some hosting server to in the in this operation, but this time is they use a uh, uh, Microsoft Azure hosting service. And just like previous day, the hacker added this into the environment becoming at one year, at least one year. So becoming has a very serious hack. So the, the screenshot is our uh, AI generated cyber situation graph. So as you can see, the let's totally have a mess uh, the, in, in the environment. So the sweat has entered in the environment at the 2018 November. And the, at the interesting point is the uh, hacker return in the environment every quarterly to collect the new data. And the, the 2019 November, they deploy a new weapon we call a scanning injector. And the, our colleague Indy will introduce this later on. And the once they deploy the scanning key injector, they harvest the new endpoint. So that's a, so this uh, represented the, the scanning injector has a, has its work in their environment. So why they need to deploy a scanning injector? That uh, our colleague Indy will introduce that on. And the threat use the archive password. The archive password has a similar schema, and then they also use a one byte one byte modified IAR to create the file and potential record DVD mass JU check and the firmware log, something like a, the rigid file in the system. And then based on the leak file we do the de identify and the, and the make a summary and the, the some of the data is shown below, so they collect the roadmap, a backup workspace, and chip and SDK information, and the pod SDK and the installation guide. So based on the thread, they collect the file. So we think the attack intent is stealing intelligence property, not the, the cracking stuff. So we probably is a business spy or some state sponsor attack. We are not sure, but the, the we only thing we're sure is uh, this this threat has targeting the uh is targeting the semiconductor semiconductor industry. So this totally uh, above all is my part and I will inter turn into the CK to introduce the uh, case study C. But due to the time limitation, we will quickly go through the 3C company. In C company, they have a very skillful routine that can help us to track it more deeper and try to profile the threat. So during the investigation, we identify some documents that may live by the threat. 
So this is like the cheat sheet uh, to the takers penetrant testing. And uh, the command line here uh, match some activity that we monitor. And this cheat sheet uh, referring to a very famous uh, Chinese website, so China, Chinese security website. So in this part, we can say that the Kimela campaign has at least one member that understand Chinese. But we also make the statistic about their active time. So we can see they are most active in September and nearly no active in October. And their working hour is from the 8 in the morning to the 8 in the night. So their time zone is look like the UTC plus 8. So next, uh, Indy will show the actor's digital arsenal. Thanks, CK. Hi, I'm Indy, reverse engineer from Sidecraft. Now I'm going to introduce actor's digital arsenal. We have observed these tools they use to carry out this attack. The first we are going to talk about is Cobalt Strike Beacon. Cobalt Strike is a commercial writing operation framework. They use Cobalt Strike Beacon as their primary backdoor in these intrusions. For the persistency, they overwrite Google Chrome update utility with their Cobalt Strike Beacon. Thus, there is no any new auto run entry was created, so it will lower the chance to be caught. Our product detected some suspicious memory block. The interesting part is that it is a PE file and also a show code. Cobalt Strike Beacon and Minterpreter both use this technique, the hybrid payload. This technique is to embed shellcode into the PE file header. The PE magic header MZ could be decoded as valid instructions, and these instructions will work fine in most of context. So you can ignore these instructions and append shellcode after it. The shellcode will locate itself it address and execute the reflective loader to load P image in memory. Cobalt Strike uses a special strategy to inject payload into other process. First, Cobalt Strike will spawn a new process or choose an existed process as the target. Then, inject the shell code into the process and we call it Sager. The real payload will be transferred through name pipe and executed by stager. And this strategy will bypass some sandbox or emulation based scanning. Uh, the WinRR is a popular commercial compression software. It was also used in this operation. The actor used RAR to compress and encrypt the file that's stolen. They try to ambiguate the program with existing file path called recordedtv.library-ms. The reason why we mention this file is, this file is different from the original IR.exe. We grab the old version of IR and compare it with the actor used. We found the different part was in code section, and such patch may crash the program. So we think it might it may be intended to change the hash and avoid the detection. Another hypothesis is it is just a bit flip during copy. Now we are going to talk about the most interesting malware used in this operation, the skeleton key injector. We found a unique malware that was made with two open source hacking tools, the dumpers and the mimicut. Okay, so maybe you don't know dumper. It is a program to use direct system call on Windows. Unlike Linux, Windows cannot direct use system call in shell code because the syscall number will change from release to release. The only stable interface is exported function from the shell libraries. That's why Windows shell code must rely on them and always start by locating functions and parse data in memory. So 
How, down, how do dumper doing it? First, it uses RTL get version to determine Windows version and select different embedded syscall functions depend on it. After that, you can bypass any user space hook and doing anything you want without trigger, triggering any alert. Skeleton Key is an APT malware discovered by Dell SecureWorks in 2015. It will implant a backdoor password to domain controller. Then, attacker can authent authenticate as any user as they want with the backdoor password. Meanwhile, original password remains untouched. Any other wrong password will still be rejected. Skeleton key will alter the authentication flow by hooking some crypto functions in lsas.exe. Original Skeleton key malware was never released publicly, but, not, but the author of Mimikot still made his own implementation. And the Skeleton key is a very powerful weapon against a action Active Directory. Because you don't need to dump administrator credential for literal movement. If you use the administrator credential to access endpoints in a domain, you will trigger a lot of alerts. Skeleton key cannot be removed easily without reboot. It will be painful to reboot domain controller because you may break your organization's daily routine. We also observe some other attack that using modified version of Mimikatz against Taiwan government agencies. Next, we are going to introduce new finding after the white paper published. We found Winty backdoor was used in this operation. At the first time, judged by the Camilla event log and the program usage, we thought that was a network probing tool. But after detailed analysis, we found that it's actually a WinT backdoor because of the magic number used by the WinT backdoors protocol. This is our new finding after Black Hat presentation, the backdoor used before in the CCleaner attack. CCleaner got hacked in 2017. Attacker perform supply chain attack and inject malware into CCleaner installer. If the target was interesting, they will implant second stage backdoor. What we found is a new variant of second stage backdoor used in CCleaner supply chain attack. The file name indicates that they expo exploited their hijacking vulnerability as persistence method. We will release more detail about this malware soon. Here is the execution flow of this malware. They modify an existing shared library and trojanize it by inject malicious code into its body. The original name was vnicapi.dll. The modified CRT C runtime will execute shell shellcode collector, which will concatenate spreaded shellcode pieces in the body and execute it. The collected shellcode will read the real payload from MUI file. The real payload is an obfuscated and compressed PE loader. It will unpack itself and execute the embedded PE file lessly. Both these two malware was modified by patching existing DL file. So most of the content remains untouched. Only a little part was modified. Here is the difference between this malware and the one used in CCleaner. I have unpacked and dumped the embedded PE from the obfuscated shellcode. The biggest difference is how they obtain C2 host information and their capability. The new malware has an hard-coded C2 IP address and they use a new method to decode data they grabbed from GitHub. Also, the new malware has more capability, which can replace a file and execute command. This is at the end of malware analysis part. Now, CK will make a conclusion for us about this talk. So it come back to my turn. And uh, in the final, we just want to give some conclusion and the takeaway. So 
Today's presentation of the disclosure of large-scale APT attacks target semiconductor vendors, and more than eight vendors are being compromised. Uh, we will say this attack is a uh, precisely attack and target the leading uh, semiconductor vendors, uh, their subsidiaries, partners, supply chain, and competitors. And their goal is steal intelligent property, like a document, source code, and SDK, uh, which will make a long-term damage to the victim. And for the technical part, the tech widely utilize some open source or general tool to make their own malware. So this will make the attribution more harder. In the two case study, we can see the AD and VPN are compromised. So the enterprises should consider the resilience about their IT systems, avoiding relying on a single security service. Uh, when we investigation this attack, a rarely used guarantee attack uh, is used, which makes the adversaries uh, log in like a normal users. So this can be used for a persistent and defense evasive purpose. So the final, no system is safe. So we need to regularly do the free hunting and shorten the mean time to detect and mean time to respond. So this is our today's talk, and thank you for your listening.